Good evening. We're here again for another round of Focused Fire. This week we are going to tackle the, we're going to try to tackle the first 26 cards of the Books of Sorrow. It's a Ow! lot of information. Um, with me tonight, this is Blue Crew 86, and with me tonight we have our co-host Steamy Will Steaming Willie Beeman. That's Steaming, yeah. actually, sir. Wow. It's a yeah. Steaming pile of names. <laughs> And then we Steam also have Justin saying 0516. Uh, I, I. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm watching now. the chat. That's right. Um, and just, just as a quick, you know, just out of quick appreciation, we, we kind of talked about this offline, but we're, we're going to go ahead and actually have just a moment of silence in respect for what has kind of happened this past week. If you're, you know, obviously if you're not aware France and Beirut and a number of other areas have been kind of hit pretty hard with pretty violent outbreaks. So we're just going to have a quick moment of silence and respect for that. Um, so we'll just take that real quick. All right, and thank you guys again for that. That's just uh, just out of respect for that whole event, which kind of was a shocker to all of us. Um, just you know, just some quick quick house cleaning as usual. Um, recap for previous previous stream. Obviously, we did Toland last last week, which was a it was fun. A um, lot of lot of darkness. To be explored there. Obviously, we're continuing that that uh, approach this week with the Books of Sorrow. Next week, we're actually going to be taking a break for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to be out of town, and then we're going to be trying to do. I think we're going to try to squeeze in two the next week so that we can finish up Books of Sorrow, and then obviously we'll have our whatever our next topic is, which might even possibly be another round of books of sorrow if we're not sick and tired of that one um so that's that's the plan so far for us um this this week obviously as you can see in stream we are we're calling this books of sorrow volume one again we're going to be trying to tackle the first 26 cards so we'll be kind of taking a different approach than normal normally we do a what do we know and then what do we think and we're kind of going to blend what do we think into what do we know just because the amount of content that we have this week is pretty significant um and then also i did we did tweet this out i do actually have a um a completely random thing i actually got a free loot crate i don't know if you guys are knowledgeable about loot crate but it's uh you know you can still send that to me yeah <laughs> Willie yeah. Willie really wants it. Um it and it's really funny. I got I got a completely free one and I it's good until tomorrow at nine PM Pacific. So I'm gonna we're gonna just give it away at the end of the stream tonight. Just out of appreciation, you know, it's Thanksgiving and so I kind of figured I talked to these guys and I kinda of figured, you know, what better way to show appreciation than to <laughs> to pass on the uh the wealth, I guess you would call it. It's not, it's, I'm not trying to set a, a standard by any means. It was just something that kind of fell in my lap. And so I was like, you know, let's just give it, let's just give it out. <laughs> um, ironically, I looked it up and I didn't realize it, but the month of November is actually combat theme, um, which kind of fits actually with, and we'll get into it, you know, obviously we'll get into the sword logic conversations and stuff like that. 
but it was it was an interesting similarity that we had. So we'll be doing that at the end. Uh, we'll probably we're gonna be usually we usually run about two hours, and so we'll be doing that around midnight my time. Willie, if he's still awake. We'll try to get it before he passes out. <laughs> so, oh, hey, I've lasted till one o'clock every other night. I'll do it tonight. True. So with hey, that, with that, I was going to say, said, to, uh, go for it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, about setting precedents, it's kind of like buying a girl flowers on the first date. <sighs> I know. I she's was going to. She's going to expect it. Yeah, I know. So hopefully, hopefully, Loot Crate will continue this tradition and give me another one next Thanksgiving. So. <laughs> But with that being said, so I think that's everything that I have on my list of things to cover for right now. Um, with that being said, Willie, Justin, who, which one of you guys want to kick off the first card, start this descent? All right. Um, well, let's go ahead and go with the overview where I'm... Uh, well, we, actually, no, let's go ahead and start with the card because there's so many. Uh, the first one is the, after you catch the first calcified fragment, it's Curiosity. Uh, it's verse 1-0, the fundament. And it reads, Dear sisters, it's taken me two years, a quarter of our lives, but I've found the proof. We aren't native to the fundament. Our ancient ancestors came here to hide. The plate of stone we live on, our osmium court, is one fragment of a rocky planet that crashed into the fundament and broke apart. All the nearby, other nearby continents, the helium drinkers, the bone plaza, the star cutters, came from the same world. Perhaps the other races of the fundament are, immig are migrants too. We live on a shrapnel of our home world, floating on an ocean deep inside a gas giant. A gas giant, Damo. That's what fundament must be. A titanic gas planet. The endless storm above us must be one layer of the atmosphere. And the sea we float on, there's more down beneath it. So much more. You understand what this means, Sathona. The timid truth is a lie. We aren't meant to be the world's prey. We weren't born to live and die in the dark. We have a better... Dun-dun-dun. Destiny. Tell our father, Sister Sathona, this is our proof of his life's work. With love, for your second birthday, your surviving sister, Borash. Now, um, I think it's important to point out, just in case we do have people that haven't read the books of Sar or know what they are, it's what you get from the calcified fragments inside Destiny that you collect all throughout the Dreadnought. Um, amongst other places, and it tells a story of how Orash, the character that just wrote that first card, became Oryx, who you kill at the end of the raid that's currently out for the Taken King, the Taken King himself. Um, I know it says that they're sisters, and that might be confusing right now, we'll get into that later, but... It's it's all about how Orash and her sisters came to become the Hive, and how Oryx came to become a god amongst the Hive. And I believe his sisters are as well, but we'll get into that later. Um, anybody want to take any takes on that? I actually, I actually do. I, I think that it's really interesting, the part that says that gas giant well there's that but we aren't meant we weren't <laughs> born to live and die in the dark i think that's that's interesting because it is know, interesting you know what as we all know obviously the hive are exactly that they live and die in the dark and you know we'll get that that will become more apparent as we get into the later card uh, actually in a couple cards but to me, that was that was an interesting thing, was because it's almost you know her saying we aren't supposed to be in the dark, but yet that's where they gravitate towards naturally. Um, I think that's really interesting. But that was just, yeah. and then obviously yes, the gas giant part. That is yes, blatant. Uh, I uh, I find it real interesting that they live on the actual shrapnel of their home world. So 
their home world apparently crashed into the fundament and the plates that they live on are actually shards or pieces of the world that crashed into fundament uh in a later card we'll come to um we'll actually have one of the worms say that they they pulled them or drew them to fundament to take up their place as the hive and I always took that as being a figurative thing um but re going over this card again it's it's kind of making me feel that they literally were pulled gravity wise to the fundament um i found that really interesting about this card uh, and just a bunch of things that are be going to become relevant in the next two or right. three cards as well i like I, I also like to point out keep keep an eye on the the continent names it's to me it's an interesting it, the the play on elements is very interesting to me do we want to you want me to read the next one or justin you yeah. want to read the next one uh, I, can, I can do the next one okay I also want to go ahead and point out that, uh, you know, once again, surviving sister or ash, um, as well as the fact that she points out to Sathona that, you know, it's all about her father's life work, which I think becomes important later on as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it actually says, uh, your first surviving sister, Orash, which makes me, yeah. and there's, there's later things that kind of make, lead me to believe that the hive have a multitude of spawn and a bunch of them don't survive. Um, and this will be backed up in a later card with Crota, but, uh, kind of makes me think they just have a, well, an and entire... also, also in the card with the helium, the, uh, helium drinkers. Yeah. I mean, that makes ambassador. it pretty good. But that's for that's a different thing. I, I understand where Justin's going with his thing. Right, right. And, yeah. uh... So you want to you want to read Predators? And, or, anywho. Yeah, we can go yeah. move right on to Predators. If you don't have it, I can get it. No, I've got it, baby. Okay. I've got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> verse 1-1, one, one, Predators. Predators and Menaces, carved to endure by Jiro. Third surviving sister of the Osmium King's last brood. A storm joy. A storm joy is a living cloud. When it passes over our continent, it lowers its feeding tentacles. On each tentacles are bait stars. Although the light makes you happy, you must avoid it. You will be eaten. A storm joy is a good way for an old person to choose death. Also, a daring knight can cut the bait stars from the tentacles. I have six. Falling. If you fall off the edge of the continent, you will die in the ocean. This is a special hazard when our father, the Osmium King, uses the engines. Helium drinkers. The currents of the fundament ocean bring us near other continents. The helium court is near us now. They are of our species, but they are our enemies. Their knights raid us every day. Helium drinkers have two legs, two arms, and three eyes, just like us, but they are bright slash evil i want to be a knight and fight them the helium drinker ambassador ate 10 of my sisters as tribute this is normal however i resent it mothers mothers can fly they live much longer than 10 years mothers are extremely smart and they guard their spawn if you try to tamper with the eggs they will eat you sathona wants to eat the jelly and become a mother when she turns four Storms. The rain is often poisonous. Sometimes it dissolves flesh. When lightning misses the lightning farm, it can vaporize a person. This entire world is deadly to us. Mysteries. The fundament is very large. We are the smallest things in it. If you don't understand something, it will probably kill you, my teacher Tao says. This is why we have such short lives. So we can breed and adapt quickly. Moon waves. My sister Arash is afraid of moon waves. When she gets back from her expedition to the tungsten monoliths, I will ask her why. Just a lot of information, a kind of little rundown of what life on the fundaments like uh, seems to be written by Jiro. And that, and I would make the point also. So, 
the books of sorrow are not all written by one perspective um it's it's a collection of almost it's almost their holy books you know it's it's kind of a holy manuscript i guess you would call it of the history of the hives and it's not told from one perspective it's told from roughly three perspectives there's a few few cards that are later on that are actually even more in question but we know that zero um Arash, who will get into that whole mess, and uh, I always blank on her, Sithona, um, because I always think of her later name, um, right. <laughs> so that, I think that's also... The other The other thing really kind of interesting here is that it's, it's the third surviving sister of the last brood. I think that's an interesting piece to catch, too. Yeah. Well, it, well, I mean, you look at these uh, creatures that they currently are before they become the hive, which I'll just go ahead and say it now. They're they're called the krill. Um, it it seems like krill have a very <clears throat> tribal. I would say feudal. Yeah, yeah, and at the same time, though, I mean, well, they, and they are. I mean, they we're are talking about you. you think true. The the ambassador ate ten of my sisters as tribute. Right, it's normal, but I resent it. Right. You know, it's like they're cannibals. You know, it it happens. My ten of my sisters got eaten. There's only three <laughs> of us left. That's cool. You know, it's what happens. But I don't like it. I uh, don't really blame her. <laughs> yeah, you you can't really get mad at her. It's not like it was even a good percentage of sisters that lives. Um, and you will notice that they're all born as sisters mm -hmm. for now. And we'll find out more about that later. And well, we actually find out a little bit about it now. You know, as a krill, you eat jelly, you become a mother. You live longer than most of the other krill do. You're get more intelligent and you lay eggs and if someone touches your eggs you eat them and mm -hmm. Sathona she wants to become a mother when she turns four so that's apparently four years old is the maturity age for the krill yeah there that's, is just that's interesting too because we know that well, yeah, we'll get we'll get into that later. The the age of when it's too old. It seems like it's it's a very very short window that they they exist in, and it's also yeah, it's, it's also interesting indeed. that it's the mother jelly, but it's a night morph. Like it, it's a it's a negative different... virtual bitch mac. Really? <laughs> Already? Yes. <laughs> because... Longer than I thought it'd be. Oh, that's fair enough. <laughs> because the first mothers one. are actually a wizard transformation right knights or knights that right but we're not going to get morph. into i think what blue's trying to say is is they they mention they metamorphosize the process, into... yeah the, the process by which you become a mother is by taking the jelly, the jelly. right as right, opposed right. to just assuming the night morph they don't go into yeah i was oh, okay was okay okay i got you dodged you can uh, rubber band that back my way. That VBS. The other, the other interesting thing um, is so. I, I, I see what you're. I'm picking yeah. up what you're putting down. Yeah. Um, the other interesting thing is so in the previous card they said or uh, Orash says you know that they were not meant to live and die in dark. However, in this card, if you read the Stormjoy piece, it's although light makes you happy, you must avoid it. You will be eaten. So it's it's interesting the the uh, the disconnect there almost because they don't it's it's like they don't want to live in dark but to live in light means to die if that I mean yeah. I think isn't isn't this here where it says where is it light is death wasn't that in this card or am I remembering it uh, it's the um, you know what they say is the bait stars are the best way for old people to choose to die. And, you know, like you said, the light makes you happy, but if you don't avoid it, you're going to get eaten. Right. So, man, that's another interesting thing is that's they're talking about the storm joys mm -hmm. and them being a living cloud. Now, 
think about that. That's kind of like what backwoods uh, hillbillies, so to speak, <laughs> talk about with UFOs. And no, I'm not talking about people in Texas. Oh, come on. Um, I can't specify a re any regions <laughs> except if you have mountains, you probably got them living in there. But you know what I'm talking about. Them good old boys with hardly any teeth left that say, yeah, they're little gray people. That's that's <laughs> kind of what this seems like, you know, to me, is they're talking about the Stormjoy. That's actually a spaceship. They just they don't understand that's a ship because they're so primitive. Oh, and yeah. you know, their, their minds you know, are so simple they view it as magic, which is a later card it, as well. And yeah, I we'll, we'll move a, on to that. I but. think a storm joy would be a really good hive metaphor for the traveler using the light as the bait star to, to lure species in. Uh, but when through, like, through hive eyes all they offer is yeah it's like the that's what we're talking about in chat actually yeah through the through the krill hot through the krill's eyes you know it's you're a eating. fish but what if they're not the even being are. eaten what if, yeah like, what if they're being taken to a better and, but taken with up. the light instead of the way that like orcs takes you know right right that's and uh question. yeah it, it it comes to my mind all the time like what if this entire time the light the has sky been, has, has been actually been helping. Interfering with them. Well, and, and we know that it has. And, well, we know that, yeah. We know that it interferes, but does it help them? Right. That's because the they question. feel that the, it doesn't. And we're, I guess I should not get into that now, right. but I want we'll, to we'll, so we'll, bad. We'll get there. We'll get there. That's one of the um, one of these cards. But that's, that's the thing is, you know, you got to keep in mind, it just, the light makes you happy, but you get eaten, which to a primitive tribe type, race being eaten that might be being abducted but you know if you're being abducted by the traveler dematerialized getting, you know or transported or uh teleported beamed up would be a good word yeah beam me up scotty as well speaker beam me up i was trying not to say that but you, <laughs> you went ahead and did that so um am i the only one who pictures the bait stars as being calcified fragments? Like, yes, I think when, that they're. I imagine them as the little. I mean, look at them; the, they're pretty shiny. I wouldn't the, doubt it. No, what is the? Is it the lure fish? Is that's what that thing's called? I, I'm angler angler fish. fish. That's what I imagine that. That's what every time someone talks about the bait star, I just imagine that like thing. Especially since they call themselves the krill, it just kind of that solid. Uh, that is solid. They're blue. Give you, yeah, blue too. It, it, it could, especially it could when you look a, at the card, like what yeah. they look like. Yeah, I it mean, could, it could be a calcified fragment. I, I not disagree. I just but the th whenever the thing about that, the calcified fragments add. is, you know, they give off that green funk. That's true. That only the darkness gives off. Well, and we know that the calcified. I mean, in regards to the calcified fragments, I, I, I'm thinking that these are actually what this is stored on. The, the fragments are the actual, like, I wouldn't say pages, but they're the actual housing. Entries. Ha, yeah, they're, they're the they're housing entity of the verses. Because, you know, we pick up a fragment and we get a verse. I mean, I, I would think it's kind of like a uh, holocron from Star Wars. That's kind of how I picture the the fragments, is they're, they're a segment of this. Or like an 8-track tape back in your day, right? Or that works, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I thought it was very interesting that uh they referred to the helium drinkers as being um bright right that's that's evil. what i was thinking of bright and evil that's the one i was thinking um which is a very odd distinction to make of a proto hive species um but yeah i don't know if that's going to come into play later or if that was just kind of the odd remark right yeah well and then you pair that up with the bait star and it's like uh, I, I don't know. I get, I, I try really hard not to read into some of these things, but it's really hard not to. Do you want me to okay. do a uh, hateful verse? Yes. All right. So verse one, two is the hateful verse, which is the third fragment. And it's for the consideration of the helium court written in desperation, this sealed secret. I am Tao sterile mother teacher to the children of the Osmium throne. As a mother, I live long 
As a neuter, I can rise above the small battle, uh, battles of court politics. I alone see the patterns of survival. Alone, I design the great engines that move the Osmium court. Now, alone, I must act to save up my kingdom. Senility has claimed my lord the Osmium king. He is tin and mad. The study of ancient texts consumes him. Today, he raves about moons, moons above the storm. Tomorrow, he will wander the halls, speaking to his familiar, a dead white worm from the deep sea. He keeps it in a glass, and he tends to it, and he neglects the duties of a king. The Osmium King has three surviving heirs, each two years old. Zero, the youngest and bravest, who wants to be a knight. Sathona, most clever, who wants to be a mother. Arash, navigator child, who dreams of the infinite ocean. Tomorrow she will return from the tungsten monoliths. None of these are suitable heirs. None of them will protect the Osmium Court from the howling fundament. Zero can fight, but not lead. Sathona can think, but not fight. Arash's curiosity will draw her away from duty. I fear for all future children. Soon, the Osmium King will lock himself into the royal, royal orrery to study the moons. Gather your knights, O Helium Drinkers, and invade our continent. Kill the three heirs. I will rule the Osmium Court as your regent and build engines for you. And if I fail, let the Leviathan in the deep eat me. Written in grief, this hateful request... Tau, Osmium Mother, neutered to watch. So, yeah. Yeah, so Basically, that's... we have Scar from The Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> but Tau doesn't, she doesn't seem to be driven by... Malice. A, malice or a, or a desire for power. I don't think this is a power play as much as it is just a, a very... No. full desire to have the good of her people. Right, and I think uh, that that's I think that's the reason why she says as a neuter I can rise above the small bot of battles of court politics. I think that's exactly what it is. Is I'm not doing this for a power play. I'm doing this to to ensure the survival of our people. You know, this is this is the sacrifice that is necessary to continue our existence basically. Oh, that's yeah, what exactly. I got. I, that's what I got from that 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 line right there. It was it was really yeah. odd when you read it, and then like you kind of get to the end of it, and it was oh okay. I see where I I see how she set that up. She she was saying I'm not doing this for a power play. I'm doing this for survival, which is exactly also, yeah. Like you, you think about small battles of court politics, and you think about the politics uh, you know in the country. Um, you know, it's like, I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, what's going on right here right now is wrong. Right. And, uh, you know, you got to, of course, point out his familiar is a dead white worm that washed up from the deep sea. He keeps it in a glass. He tends to it. And while he does all this, he doesn't do what a king should be doing. And uh, like he pointed out, Blue... She's a neuter. She says that she is the sterile mother. That means that although she took the mother the the jelly, she cannot make babies. She can't make spawn. So, you know, it, it makes you see that the krill use these sterile mothers. It seems like they only have one, and they use it for its intelligence because you grow more intelligent when you eat the jelly. Kind of like a wizard is more intelligent than a knight or a thrall, but we'll get to that later. And let's be clear, the thing that the, the Osmium King should be doing is dying. He's 10 years old. He's at the end of a Krill lifespan. And my question is, why has an heir not already been chosen? Um, he is by Krill standards, approaching senility and the end of his road. Um, so it's actually kind of interesting to me that not only is he allowed to remain king, but that uh, My, no, that none of the heirs has been pushed forward. Right, and the only thought I had there is, you know, we know that he's had other broods, so it could be a situation there where there was an heir, but the heir got eaten by an ambassador 
Like, you know, there, there, it could, or it got claimed for a bait star. It fell off. You know, this is not a very friendly environment, which is, you know, obviously the grounds of the timid truth is the fact that the world is pretty much out to get them. I mean, the, you can't deny that they are kind of up a creek without a paddle as far as it, survivability goes for the most part. I mean, they've, they've eked out a, a, a type of survival, but you know, it's, it's not a, it's not a happy life <laughs> to be a crew. No. And so I think, I mean, it's, it's kind of, I can, I kind of get the feeling that there might've been an error, but you know, there is no longer one. It's kind of the, the other thing that I, I also really like to point out here is Tau is the designer of the engines that move the continents, which tells me, and and her bargaining chip that she uses is that ta she's like, hey, if you do this for me, not only will I serve as regent, which kind of you already have, you know, that's kind of, I, I kind of got the sense they already are the regent of the helium drinkers. But she also kind of throws in there, and I'll design you engines. You know, she, I, and so that tells me that even though the helium drinkers are actually more, maybe more militarily powerful than the Osmium Accord. As far as developmentally um, and technologically, the Osmium might actually be, you know, that they might actually have a, a hand on that. I, I, I keep going back to that. I think that's really interesting. And I also kind of point that out as, you know, back in the first card, this are, these are fragments of their home. Well, I mean... Everyone likes to say that it was a planet that crashed into the, the the gas giant. What if it was a ship and they just got stuck with the engine room and everyone else is on different sections of the ship that is floating throughout this gas planet? I mean that's that's what this that's what this makes me think of is oh no, you have the segment of the ship with an engine and you have a sterile mother who just happens to be intelligent and was able to basically reverse engineer the engines and is now basically using that knowledge to trade for a favorable outcome for something that she's afraid is going to happen. Because if, I mean, what tells what she's saying to, to me at least is if zero takes control, well, we're just going to go to war with somebody like zero has already stated that she wants to kill the knights who are eating her sister. Right. So they're going to war with helium drinkers. And we know that's not going to end well. Um, Sathona, who just wants to be a mother, I mean, to me that sounds like she's just going to go and become a mother, and basically she's not going to be king, obviously. And then Orash. And Orash and Zero are kind of the two that are standing out to me from the three heirs that are possible for actually taking control. Zero is you're going to get yourself destroyed. And Orash, I think she's worried that she's just going to go off and, you know, she's just going to go off and look at the sky and basically become her father, who obviously in Tao's eyes has sacrificed his right to rule because of this random white worm thing that he keeps talking. I mean, I can totally see it from her perspective. He's he's walking around the hallway just babbling to a glass jar. Like, I mean, that that is... I, I totally see where she's coming from. He's gone insane. And then obviously, you know, he's 10... And, you know, all that. And then and also just, you know, we kind of threw this out in chat too, but we don't know that this is 10 Earth years, right? We, oh, no. Yeah. This is 10 years, but it's never specified that it's Terran years. It's just 10 years. So it could actually be, you know, these things live until they're 100 Earth years. It's just 10 years of this planet. So I, I do want to make that point. Now, in, you know, contextually, that is still a fast pace but that's to me every time i reread this card that just makes me think they're not actually on segments of the planet they're on segments of a ship which yes. actually points out the needle ship might actually not be a ship it might be an escape pod pretty good point and it they do refer to the pieces as shrapnel right which is an odd choice of words for a right and I mean, it would it would make sense if you of crash if you crash a, a ship into a planet, you're gonna it it's gonna break, obviously. But 
it will get torn apart in, in you know, the reentry to at the, the atmosphere. And then it would also make sense why the needle is, you know, strangely incapable of uh, escaping the atmosphere is because it's not actually a ship. It's just a escape pod with engines that function. Though I, I take that back because the needle, never mind, we'll go back into that when we get the description of the needle ship. I'm, that yeah, might, but... I might be misspoke. I might be not correct on the, that assumption of the needle ship. Um, I actually found something uh, pretty interesting. Uh, there's a couple places in, in this grimoire where they refer to the Osmium King as spending time in his orrery, mm-hmm. which I always pictured as some giant Scrooge McDuckian vault. But um, actually, an orrery is a mechanical model of the solar system. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever seen the thing with the gears and the planets to where when you rotate everything around the sun, the different moons uh, orbit their planets and everything kind of moves mechanically? That's what an Ori is. So maybe, well, not maybe, I'm going to go ahead and just state it. He spends all his time in this giant model of the solar system, the observable solar system around them, aligning moons and kind of looking to the stars uh, when he should be worried about being a king. I just thought that was a nice little tidbit. Or it could be a room that's like the speaker's room in the tower. Exactly. It's, that's what I imagine when... You are I, right, because the, I think the speaker has exactly one of these in right. his, Well, his and desk. he's got the giant ball traveler model thing that's the hologram thing. I don't think it's that. I don't think this yeah, guy's... Yeah, you uh, think about that, dude. Is that, sophisticated. that is actually a really good point, Justin. Because, once again, we're comparing the light and the dark being two sides of one coin. Right. Because when you go into that speaker room, that's exactly what it is. Uh, he has all the different planets that are going in a rotation, moons included, and they might line up eventually. I mean, one would assume they would. So, that's actually a great thing to point out there, Justin. I never even thought about it. I knew you kept me around for some reason. Nah, but... Yeah, exactly. You're our dictionary. Yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I never thought to look up what an Ori actually was. And then you look at the Ori and... No, what do you know? It's a place that sounds a lot like the speaker's room. Yeah, because it, admit it. You, you know, thought it said ornery. <laughs> ornery is a word that had crossed my mind while reading the card. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, uh, you want to do the oath? Yeah, take yeah, it away. Well, the only reason I'm pushing is because we have a bunch of guards to go through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're already. wasting time here. All right, here we go. Number three, the oath. It's uh, sisters. This is how an oath is done. Place your left hands on the mast close to mine. Now take the knife in your right hand. Push it through your left hand. Straight between the bones. Now carve a bloodline down the mast. Speak your oath. I am Zyro, youngest daughter of the dead king. I will take back my Osmium Court and kill the traitor tail. On my left eye, I swear vengeance. In blood, the oath is made. I am Sathona, middle daughter of the dead king. I will take back my home and eat the mother jelly. I will raise my spawn on the corpse of the Helium King. On my right eye, I promise this. In blood, the oath is made. Now... I will help your oath, sister. I will help make your oath, sister. I will help it too. I am Orash, daughter, first daughter of the dead king. I will chase my father's last screaming warning. I will know what changed the motion of our moons. If the end of the world is coming, I will understand why. On my center eye, I swear it. I will understand. In blood, the oath is made. In blood. Thank you, sisters. We have only my ship left to us. But a ship is freedom. We have secrets to hunt, stormlit realms to explore, 
and great armies to rise. Put up the lightning sails, and we will voyage far. And uh, that card, of course, that shows, hey, we made it out. Probably a bloodbath in there, because you got to imagine that some of the knights, at least, or, you know, whoever they had trying to protect the Osmium King would have tried to protect him, but he's gone. He's the dead king now. Well, and... and we and we know that they know that Tao was the the traitor. Yeah, and and, I, and they know for sure she is. Yep. Right, and I know, and I, uh, yeah, Bife Bife made a comment in his his view of it that he was thinking that Tao actually was the one that tried to kill the sisters. I don't know if I agree with that, but I I, I see because they know that she betrayed him, and I'm gonna try really hard not to go completely spin foil on this one. No, is, no full spin metal jackets. We we don't have time so for that. Promising. <laughs> full spin metal jacket cannot happen. Uh, um, not tonight. Yeah, um, actually, if you want to touch on, yeah, I think it's interesting. Someone brought this up in the chat. I can't believe I can't remember if it was Dragon or Libby. Um, each one of them swears upon a different eye. Jiro mm -hmm. the Jiro the left, Sathona the right, and of course Oryx the middle. I don't know what um, significance the eyes have, but there's a later card where um, I think Arash is being read a story, yes. and she closes um, the left and the right and and leaves the the center eye open. So is the is the middle eye like the you know the I think it's their prime eye. Like the third that's... eye? Yeah. The, the all oh. seeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep Well, think about it. Good. That's a good. The spot point. of the eye probably hasn't moved. That third eye is right there in the center. Right. And as a predator, you know? that as a predator that would be the optimal. Or as a yeah. well, actually as as a creature of anything, that would be an optimal perception point. Yeah, for them, they're prey, you know. Right. I mean, if the, you... And, especially the the Osmium Court specifically. Right. They are on the bottom of the food chain as far as even their own race, the Krill, goes. So, they need any advantage they can get. Unfortunately, the Helium Drinkers have it, too. So... Yeah, so pretty much this is the, the call to arms. Let's... let's Go off in the wild blue yonder, and it's the it's can. the three it's the three toast of you. Oh wait, never mind. Um, no, but I think that also this. <laughs> this yeah, I, gee, I stopped myself. It's such a clear I know where connection. You're going with that. It's such a clear connection to me. But this is the ship I was thinking of when I was saying escape pod. This ship. Yeah, because, it's actually kind of antiquated. It has a mast. Right. Well, yeah, there's that too, which I don't, I don't understand. But you know, actually, that's not. Yeah, I don't know. I'm done. I still, <laughs> think, not... I still think the shrapnel. Are Go pieces drink some coffee, ship. Blue. Yeah, I, I still <laughs> think the shrapnels are pieces as a ship. I just actually yeah. go get some beer. Yeah, no, <laughs> or a shot, or a shot. Yeah, I think I think we're we pretty well nailed that one. Um, the next card is. Simply named Syzygy. Um, Syzygy. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> He's already had a couple shots. If you yeah. want to hear the best pronunciation of this, go watch Bife's video. Right. It's hilarious. Well, he, he can sound, he can sound <laughs> dignified saying anything. That's very true. It could right. be Buttercup and it was Buttercup. And you would be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is riveting. But, uh, yeah, um, the, a syzygy, before we dive headlong in this, is an alignment, usually of planets. It's an it's a astronomical term. I promised myself I wasn't going to say astrological. But, Good uh, job. <laughs> there you go. Um, anyhow, the syzygy, carved to endure by Arash, the high vengeance. Only Jiro's bait stars let us escape. Only Sathona's tricks let us reach the coast. But now that we have my ship, I must lead the way. I am the navigator. We may never see our homes again. Jiro seeds with hate and fury for Tao. But this is my deepest fear. 
Our civilization drifts on the fundament. At the tungsten monoliths, I learned that thousands of other species drift with us, coexisting on a vast world sea, and the tides of the fundament move us all. The timid truth says that we are the smallest, most fragile things alive, the natural prey of the universe. Tao would have us believe that our ancestors came to the fundament to hide from the hungry void. My father died afraid, not of vile Tao or the helium drinkers, but of his orrery. And he screamed to me, Aurash, my first daughter, the moons are different, the laws are bent. And he made the sign of the syzygy. I wonder Imagine what that is. Yeah, I'm imagining a bunch of S's and Y's and Z's and stuff <laughs> spelled out in the air. But, uh, now I'm, I'm picturing some hand signs like some shit from Naruto. Stuff from Naruto. Go on. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, is that like uh, Blood oh, versus Crips or something? Yeah, the whole hand. <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly what he's talking about. Continue. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm 29. Okay. I'm not 30 yet, so I, I <laughs> okay. watched. So it's still I okay watched for you anime to watch that Naruto. Happened. Yes, it is okay because I have <laughs> okay. kids that watch Naruto. Oh, there you so, go. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> imagine the 52 moons of fundament lining up in the sky. It wouldn't take all 52, of course, just a few massive moons. But this is my deepest fear. Imagine their gravity pulling on the fundament sea, lifting it into a swollen bud, bulge. Imagine the bulge collapsing as the syzygy passed. A wave big enough to swallow civilizations. A god wave. I have to find a way to stop it before the god wave annihilates my species. If I could only get back to my father's orrery, I could learn exactly when. We are weeks of travel and many continents away from home. When I'm paralyzed by fear, Shiro sits in the cabin with me and comforts me with soft, brave words. But more and more we have come to rely on Sathona's wit. She will go off to be alone. She insists she must be alone, and return with some mad idea, steer into the storm, throw down a net, eat that strange beast, explore that menacing wreck. Somehow, Sathona seems to manufacture good, good luck by sheer will. And this is really, it kind of sets up, I know we're, there's a big debate about whether the hive are sympathetic, which is seems like an odd one, but... It really almost oh, right endears. Right here, they're not the hive; they're the krill. Stuff, yeah, they're, they're still know? the krill at this point, and it almost endears you to these three sisters, uh, their devotion to one another, and their uh, their kind of collective struggle. Well, and to, it, it gives you a degree of sympathy for the things that, well, the next few things to come. It gives you a degree of sympathy of where, why they made <clears throat> the decisions that they've made. I think is that's that's the part that I think that you know they, you know from from a outside of the game they knocked it out of the park. <laughs> you you cannot read the story here and not be sympathetic to these three. Now what they become, you know, obviously we 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 all agree on that. And the transition parts where we all have disagreements, but these three, I don't think anyone could say seriously that they don't have sympathy for what what has happened to them. They survived a, a you know a political coup, and they're they're I mean they're naturally going to be pissed. I don't I don't think anybody has any problem with them being annoyed or pissed, and you know. They're responding in their own way to that to the trauma of having their entire world destroyed, and now they're like, "Yeah, you're just gonna have to suck it up and deal with it." And it's like, you know, no, I'm not going to. Is kind of well, and that's that's a later card too, but that's that's kind of the sense that I get from especially Arashes. You know what? No, we're not gonna just suck it up. We're gonna we're gonna change this. So. But I also I think it's I think it's kind of funny that Sathona demands that she be alone with the worm. I think it's like it reminds me of um, Golem. It's like no, this is my <laughs> precious, not your precious. We found it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's an important thing to note too. Is that well, even though they didn't say it was with the worm, you will find out later on <clears throat> why we're saying it's the worm. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. I guess and, that's also that's a very good point. We we yeah. as readers know something about it that that they don't. Yeah, if anybody hasn't read it yet, you have no idea what Blue's talking about. That's very true. But uh <laughs> actually even you know, if you that's, have read it, that's, that's blue chance. for you. Yeah. I've been drinking and this guy did that. I'm just saying. <laughs> But, yes. you know, the the thing that I like about this card personally is that Orash, her her thing oh. is the God Wave. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to annihilate my species. I need to get back into my father's worry. I need to know when this is going to happen. Like, that is her goal, mainly, is to understand what her father was saying, when it's going to happen... If and how she can prevent it. While, of course, Zyro wants to kill as many things as possible. Um, Sathona wants to become a mother still, but she wants to lay her eggs and all that good stuff that we're not going to get into. That <laughs> Yeah. For the helium drinkers, uh, Ambassador... Who happen to eat all the eggs? I keep, yeah, I keep thinking that that's the corpse that she's thinking of. I, I can't help but think of that. <laughs> like, you know, you, you. I have my yeah, eyes. Yeah, she's on like you. you specifically. I mean, he he ate ten of her sisters. What do you expect? I want to lay eggs in that dude too. There, I said it. Uh, it's just it, it tells you, like you said, Blue. We're not putting up with this anymore. Yeah, I just that's we're, how I I get we're it. gonna change what is happening to us and our species. They say species, but they're talking specifically about their court, the Osmium court. Once again, they're the lowest of the low as far as the krill go. And they're they're tired of it. Can you really blame them? So you think about it, the last of the or the survivors of the last brood, that means there were other broods that didn't even make it. Right. And their brood of 13, apparently. At least. Three of them made it. At least three of them. Or at least 13 were in there. It's not a good survivability rate. They're tired of it. Can you really be mad at them for that? It's... Well, Damo can (laughs) <laughs> yeah, of course, Damo can. That's my point. <laughs> so, is it my turn to go on to the next card? Yeah, you sisters. Yes, sir. The needle in the worm. Yeah, I, I was about to say, it's the needle in the worm I think... that we're at. Oh, yes. Okay. Did you find another my hidden secrets. one, Blue? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> another hidden one <laughs> that's always been there. Oh, my God. Uh, Never going to hear the end of this. All one. right. <clears throat> This one is five, Needle in the Worm. My Secrets, Carved in My Code, by Sathona, The Right Eye Vengeance. This year of wild voyaging, these lightning nights and golden days, these forays into ancient wrecks and windblown flights from monsters, these are the happiest times of my life. Number two, I want to be a mother, not because I want to spawn, but because I want a long life. Long enough to make a difference. We have been at sea a year, and I am afraid. Afraid we will die out here. Now I want to point out that they were, she was two years old, I want to say. So now she's three years old, as far as this card goes. If I'm mistaken, somebody speak up. Go ahead. No, I think I th- you get it. I think that's correct. All right, number three. I know where to find secrets. I know where vast, slow things with long memories live. Number four, the needle ship. The needle ship, carved in my code by Sathona. A liar. Number one, we salvaged a needle from the Shibubi Maelstrom. That's why you guys have me have this card, because that freaking word right there. I would never have done that to you. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and for the record, I still don't know what Shavubi is. It's really bugging me. Because it's I like Shapoopy. I, oh my God, if you don't know what that is, then YouTube it. Anyways, Shaboopy. All right. Too. All right. We got it from the Maelstrom. I knew it would be there. Number two. The Needle is a gray ship as long and as slender as hope. 
as unbreakable as time and old. Older than death. It tumbled through the maelstrom before our ancestors crashed into the fundament. This is not a sea ship like ore ashes. It is an artifact of high technology. Number three. I know its purpose. I know what happened to the crew. Number four. Zyro wants to sell the ship at Kahar Natal, where our species gather. At an auction, it would earn us enough wealth to hire mercenaries. We could retake our osmium court and send the baby, eating helium drinkers to the, screaming into the ocean. So, the baby, I'm sorry, went all Will Shatner on you there. <laughs> Number five, but I told Zero the ship was worthless. Number six, Orash wants to open the ship and see if we can take command of it. I know that this is the right thing to do. I know because I asked the worm. The worm carved in my code by Sathona, who should be afraid. It was my father's familiar. I ripped it from him as we fled. It is a dead white thing, segmented, washed up from the sea. Number two, it's dead, but it still speaks to me. It says, listen closely, O oh, vengeance mine. So that was that was I, that was the. That's the that first of people reading this. Their heads exploded. Yeah, exactly. Because you're like, oh man, I know something that talks exactly like that. You know, and it, it just wow. It, I'm feeling it, so much in this moment. Right now. Yeah, that's when the spin foil really starts going crazy is when you see that the the last few words, Oh vengeance mine, you're just Wow, I, I wait, there was another species that talks exactly like that. And they helped the guardians. Separated for a great price. Yeah. We um, don't know what this great price <clears throat> is, but of course I'm talking about the Ahamkara. I don't know if we want to get into this at a later time. Uh, yeah, let's maybe let's, save it for the end. Save that. That might be. That actually might be a focus fire all in of itself. Oh, it will um, be because that's. I mean, I know we're not the only ones that are having questions about the connection between. Oh, absolutely. And, we all know that there's other people because. There's so many things like the books of There's sorrow right here in this specific moment. They bring the worms and the ahamkara they, into they a relationship. Them, yeah, they, yeah, tie, they them tie them together. together but at the same time, in this in these same books, they spread them. Right, and we will find that out as we go. Right. So, so I'll, I'll stop. for the record, the needle ship <laughs> is not part of the ship. That crashed because I'm I'm going with I'm right on that theory um, that it's a ship, not a continent that they're floating on. I'm just going to go off on that that theory is correct. Um, the needle ship is actually older than them, so and I kind of threw that in chat. What if it was a ship? What if it was a part of the ship that the worms? Act? Well, okay, never mind. We'll get to that later too. Um, but I was just, it, it did, it was older, it tumbled through the maelstrom before our ancestors crashed into Fundament. So, obviously, it's not part of their their ship pieces. Um, obviously, it used to have a crew. They got eaten. But, <laughs> you know, that's... And the, the reason why I think it might have something to do with the worm is because we know that Sathona is being taught, is being informed of things by the worm and number three on this part says I know its purpose and I know what happened to the crew the only person that could tell her that is the dead worm that she's carrying which means that that worm must have been present which is another theory that I have that's going to come up later in the next few cards but that's that to me is very telling is this is this ship okay I'm going to hold off on that until we get to the actual <laughs> conversation with the worms because I have I have another kind of theory about that whole thing too. But, and another um, thing I want to point. Oh, I can't point it out yet. I know. You know what? I'm like, we're probably thinking about the same thing. Yeah, I know. I, I can almost guarantee we're thinking about the same thing so, right now. And it's like, okay. 
All right, let's Can't go to say the next. Yeah, next card. Right, come on. Actually, I had one quick thing. Um, after number no. six. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll turn this car around. Um, after number six, this is confusing to me. I just want to clarify. I had always seen this card as being, being from the point of view of Sathona. Is that correct? Uh, yes, all yeah. of these are Sathona. I think it says okay. all of them are carved in code by Sathona. Okay. Well, the the statement right all of them after say six that it's carved in says, code. Uh, the worm carved in my code by Sathona, who should be, be afraid. afraid? Right. Who should be afraid? Sathona. Sathona. Up talking about herself. Right. Or yes. The, yeah, because just like uh, you know, in the ones before that, when she talks about the needle kit, needle ship, she calls herself a liar. liar. And then she also because says that it's she tells right you know Zero is like, hey, we have this thing right here, let's sell it, make a bunch of money, hire a bunch of mercenaries, retake our court, bam, right. we win. And because and also, then Sathona tells her, hey, this ship's worthless. We're right. not going to get the the money for this. So let's not do that. And she and then also one, is the one that has the right eye vengeance. She's the one that swore on her right eye. So yes, it would it would it would be indicative of she is the one who should be afraid. Which actually begs the question of Well, why wouldn't she be afraid? I At this point true, you're yeah. the weakest species in the world. Well and, and right now you're talking to a dead, dead white worm, worm yeah, and you're, you're listening to it. I you're, guess you're, I also, you know, I also kind of think, what what point of time is this written? Is this written after sh the worm has? That's you know that's what I'm saying, whole, like, yeah. Because I can see where Justin's coming from. What if this is kind of written? Because we know, you know, going way further than the cards that we're going to get to, we know they feel remorse. I mean, yeah. Is this something that is written looking back and being like, you know, that's maybe this wasn't the brightest idea. Maybe well, I shouldn't have lied the, to him. Uh, that's what the the phrase that's, that precedes um, the name on each one of these carved in my code. It's past. Screams to me is there's a steno thrall right. taking dictation and writing all this down. And this is based on... That was the best mental image ever, by the way. Exactly. exactly. I was about to say steno thrall, oh bro. Are at, you some point, at some with the claw, point. With the claw. He's, he's carving it with the, his claws. And the gurgling noises. Yeah. But at some point, he would seriously turn to the camera and say, it's a living. But yeah. uh, <laughs> um, so, it, it just screams to me that this is this is something that was relayed to, to a third party by Sathona. That's all I was trying to clarify. I don't want to get too far off, off point. We can move on to the next one. Go ahead, Blue. You're going to get sisters. Oh, yep. Hang on. <laughs> oh, you slacker. I was, I was responding to chat, okay? Steno thrall, you are not. Yeah, I am not a steno. Well, I am a... Okay, anyways. Okay. Just cooking, Josh. Uh, <laughs> sisters, which is... Love you one, guys. Thanks for showing up six. every week. So, sisters. A register of tokens and gestures exchanged before the end of sisterhood. Zero, my brave sister. You have worked too hard to move the carcasses out of the birthing room. Come, steer the ship for a while. Take joy in what our needle can do. Jiro tried to protest, but secretly she was so glad for Orish's care. She flew the needle ship in cutting circles, down beneath the sea, and their wake rose up to the surface like a traitor's dying breath. Orash, lonely navigator, we have traveled so long with only each other. I know you love to hear and speak new tongues. Come, sit in the flesh garden room. I will read you these stories I, I bought at Kaharn. Orash sat among the mummified flesh fans with two of her eyes closed and listened in silence to Sathona's stories, hungry to understand, voracious to know as much as she could before her ten-year life died. Later, Jiro said, Sathona, cutting mind of ours, you grow lonely in your thought. Play swords and lanterns with me. But Sathona was heavy with sorrow, and couldn't pretend any joy as she chased Jiro through the needle's glistening halls. Sathona, pensive one, what is it? What troubles you? Her sisters listened as Sathona said, Oath-bearing siblings, we are five years old. For two years we've worked to repair this ancient ship and understand its systems. I am almost too old for the mother jelly, and the knights who killed our father are surely dying of age. We three will die here in exile. Tao will outlive us. And Orash, brilliant-eyed Orash, you will die of old age long before you have proof of your god wave or any way to stop it. 
Arash and Zero looked at each other. I wish you weren't so honest, Zero said, and Arash thought that Sathona had never been wrong. In her soul, Arash knew that the only way to keep the, their oath was to find a great, powerful secret. A secret that could change everything. This was Arash's soul, her fire and her shadow, her desire to cut through the flink of the world and find its beating heart. We have to dive, Arash said. That's what this ship is built to do. Dive into the fundament, the world below us, towards the core. That's where the ancient crew died so obscenely, Zero protested. That's where the atrocity in the birthing room was born. We have to dive, Sathona said, following the whispers of her familiar. In the world beneath us, in the metallic depths, I hope we may find what we need most. More time, more life. So, a lot of information. Um, birthing room, first off. Everyone, I think, is pretty much in agreement that we're thinking that it was a ogre that was in the birthing room. Or a, a form of a proto-ogre. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean... Because we know my thing are... about the needle ship right. is it. I feel like it's another species. You're making me go into this too early, Blue, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I feel like that's another species that also worship the worm the way that the hive do. So, yeah, they have their own type of ogre, but it wasn't exactly an ogre. Because if you look too early hive lore, it shows that ogres are actually just overgrown thrall. Right. I don't know. Deer, deer help create them. Exactly. <clears throat> well, one of so, them. But, so, you know, it, it, it could be that they sent a bunch of their version of thrall there, or not even a bunch, just a crew's worth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look at, look at the thrall in hive hierarchy. You're the lowest of the low. You're the drag of the hive. <laughs> well, and we know that this is a hive-like ship. I mean, flush fans. It, yes, it, exactly. It's, it's, it's either that or it's it grave seems mind. like it's something. Maybe it was that, the grave mind in the birthing room. And that's one thing you got to keep in mind when you read this: the theme of destiny itself is an unending freaking loop. Right. You know, there's memes out there everywhere. Hey, Black Ops 3 is out. Fallout 4 is out. Who cares? You'll be back in a month. It wasn't even a month for me. I have all the Blockbuster games out right now, and I still go to Destiny to raid, and hey, Iron Banner's here, so why not? So, the only reason I'm not Iron Baroning right now is because we're doing this. So, the the theme of Destiny has always been a loop. So, it shows that some things that have happened, this might not have been the first time that they've happened. It's happened before, but here comes yeah. the cycle again. And it would make sense if it was another species who had taken the worm pact that they would kind of have the same larval reproduction. Which and we'll get would, to. Yeah, and, but I'm just, I'm just helping no, Tom Willis with the boat. But okay. it's so it's so <laughs> such an annoying part of the next like couple cards. Well, let's move on to Leviathan. And oh god, that I thought the dive was next. Yeah, Is that's I think yeah, it's the dive. I didn't like the dive. Let's do it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so Leviathan is one. after. So um, here we see. Oh, go ahead. You want to read go it? Ahead with it? Yeah, Justin, yeah, Justin, I'll, read I'll, it. It's got scissor GGGs. Oh yeah, there you go. The dive. <laughs> and we see we see the sisters make the decision in the previous card that will alter the course of pretty much everyone's history for the rest of time. Um, that is to dive. For life, Sathona dove. For vengeance, Shiro dove. And Aurash dove to understand. The needle ship pierced the skin of the world and burrowed deep. Through layers of foam and metal and cold elemental slush, Aurash devoured the ship's maps of fundament. From the high angelic cloud decks, down, da down and down through storms and oceans and plates of floating world, into the crush of the core. They met monsters of continental scope, vast anemones that raised glowing tentacles to bait them in. 
Jiro flew the needle ship through them, and they bled black carbon jelly and frost. They came to a still place beneath a plate of metal. I'll use the sensors, whispered Arash. Listen. In the wet gold dark of the helm, they listened to the ship, and the ship listened to the crushing motions of fundament. They heard the collisions of continents. They heard the patter and the crash of helium neon rain. They heard the struggles of monsters, and they heard the distant groan of the ocean rising, tugged by the distant moons. The syzygy is real, Sathona Sith hissed. It's already begun. Behind them, Jiro thought of the birthing room, where ancient explorers had labored over surgeries and administrations. Peeling back the chrysalis, and the call of which that which they had made from the deep, whose birth none of them would survive. There's something down here, she whispered, something secret. And the Leviathan loomed over them, its brow as huge as all the continents of their childhood, its great array friends crackling with the lightning of its life, booming into the hull of the needle ship in a microwave voice. I'm not going to do a Leviathan voice, but... Oh, come on, you need to. You, totally do. you have to. You can totally do it. You if you don't want to, I'll do it. <laughs> do come it. on. <laughs> you must turn back. Save yourselves from the deep. Save the world from yourselves. You must turn back. You must turn back. <laughs> Save Are you gonna yourselves from the deep. Are you going to rattle some chains? Are you going to rattle some chains while you... Uh, while you do that, um, no. I just, shout, out, shout out to me for uh, for nailing anemones first time. Confirmed. Now that is the thing about uh, I don't know if anybody here has seen Bife's video. Amazing. But when he, yeah, dude, seriously. Yeah, it's, especially it's awesome. when he That's hit the I Leviathan the part. I, I was, I was like, wow, you know, I don't even want to do this, but that this is, exactly is what was voted on. <laughs> but this shows you once they got deep enough and they they saw so many different creatures and they would just pierce them and they would bleed they didn't care they just wanted to get to the center of the fundament <coughs> once they got close enough to the center of the fundament there was a leviathan trying to tell them to turn around. And that will lead us into card 8, verse 1-8, leviathan. Real quick. Also, it resizes my mental image of the leviathan if you picture the continents as being ship parts and not actual continents. Right? I because see, yeah. Obviously, a ship part is going to be... And yes, Operation Manbag nailed it. Uh, this is very Lovecraftian. Shadow really White. Love, really Lovecraftian. But um, that's I just did want to point that out too. That was another thing that kind of, when I started thinking about it as ships instead of continents, I was like, oh, the Leviathan's not actually this giant titan. It's just a big man ray well, eel. Still pretty big. Yeah, he's big, but it's not like this giant, you know. Yeah, he's fairly large. Serpent. I mean, he's he's a big serpent, but he's not like a, not like, uh, Jormund, you know. The but he serpent. makes himself sound so large when he speaks. Right, and you, you know? know, and the other thing is, we don't really have a context in which to do all these sizes because, like, you know, the hive. We don't know are the hive actually really, really tiny at this point, or are they. What are they like, like size wise? I'd like to think that they're about the same size as they are now. Well, except for Oryx, who's ginormous. Yeah, the but krill, like, yeah, the krill say... are the size of like a regular knight. I would, I think of that, but I don't. I would know. say humanoid in scale. Right. Um, I'm thinking more like acolytes. Oh, they might be a couple feet feet taller than us, you know. Yeah. yeah. As the krill. And so, it, that's one thing that they don't exactly explain, right? And it's and but, it's, it's definitely yeah. a, a point of contention, you know, especially a, on Reddit and stuff like that, where some of these theories get thrown back and forth. Is you know they call themselves krill, but 
I think everyone is kind of coming around to the agreement that that's just the title that they've given themselves. That's not actually, they're not actually like Krill, which, you know, Krill are super tiny creatures. Yes. Whale food. Yeah. That's here on Earth, though. We're talking right, about. Right, right. This is space magic world, okay? So. It's paracosm. Although that is what makes. <laughs> There's a scientific that is what term makes us think about when you think krill, you do think, you shrimp. know, smaller than shrimp. But yeah. still. Hey, hey, Willie. All don't, right, Willie. Don't poo-poo my my real world stuff too much. That's my bread and butter. Okay. Real world. <laughs> no, here we go. All right, Willie, you're up. All right. Uh, verse one eight, Leviathan. The Leviathans war. Oh, this is all Leviathan right here. <laughs> Why do you think we nominated you for yeah. it? <laughs> I'm sorry for anybody listening right now. I will never be Bife. Story I do time. not have a uh, voice, voice changer. Nothing voice, to voice changer. <laughs> compare to what he has, but I will do my damnedest. <clears throat> the Leviathan's warning. We live on the edge of war. A war between formless and form. Between the deep and the sky. My eyes are wide. My gaze is long. Across the universe, as far as I see, the sky works to charge its fires. The deep drowns the ash. Sky builds gentle places, safe for life. Beloved fundament, refuge of trillions the sky treasures this rich place but the deep is here with us cold logic tests our walls the deep claims its dominion a ruthless final age or ashes protest old leviathan creature of myth this world is no refuge we live short hard lives we die in the dark the storm above us will never end, and soon the god wave will take us all. Above us there are only storm joys, monsters, and moons of apocalypse. Let us go down, down where we may discover the truth. Some power to avenge ourselves upon our betrayers. Some hope of survival. The Leviathan's hope. What power calls you? Down to the deep. What instinct draws you away from high hope? Quick breeding krill people, I tell you. For eons I've watched your struggle, clinging to the sharp edge of survival. Balance between the deep and the sky. You were my treasure, my proof against despair. For this is the deep claim. Existence is the struggle to exist. When the struggle seems lost, when the safe place crumbles, everything turns to the deep to survive. Reject the deep claim. You will turn back, sweet krill of hope. You will choose the sky instead. Zyro's protest. You are huge and old. Our lives are short and desperate. If that is the way the world's supposed to be, I won't have it. If people like Teo are supposed to win, I won't let them. I'll beat the world until it changes. I'll kill anything in my way. The Leviathan Sturge. This fatal logic. Hear my monopole scream. It will consume you. Before you lies the worship of death, the ruinous path. The sky builds new life against the onset of ruin towards a gentle world the deep embraces death saying this is inevitable and right I exist as hungry ruin turn back from the world killing way or you will live as death and de devastation the sky is the harder way but it is kinder my charge is balanced my voice exhausted Sathona's protest. Sisters, I have my father's familiar. Look, it answers me in plain words. It helped me find the ship. 
He gives me his strength where hopes is lost. Who will you trust? The voice that wants us to live and suffer as we have lived and suffered? The Leviathan that offers no hope against Tao or the world wave? Or the plain and honest worm? Let us see where it whispers lead us, Orash. Let us go deeper, Zyro. Let us dive, O oh sisters mine. Which, yeah, it almost seems like in this card, the honest worm that she speaks of kind of takes over because she speaks exactly like he does right at the end of the card once again. Yeah, I definitely agree there. And we know and, uh, who the honest worm ends up being, too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be here He's real soon. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, here we that have will end up there. being real soon, hopefully. Right. And I think, I think the other thing that's interesting is it, it's a, you know, someone kind of made the point, you know, and you'll, we'll get this a little bit more when, when, the wor when we meet the worms, but here you see the sky, which... The sky is kind of the light. Um, there's a lot of different running theories of if the sky is actually the traveler or if the sky is the light and the traveler is the agent of the light or whatever. <clears throat> but here you see the sky builds new life towards a gentle world. Um, so you see the opposing approaches to, you, you know, life life sucks like you know that's just he, he's not denying that he's saying that's just the way it is in a way and in the way that you do and someone someone actually in our chat kind of made the point too you know the sky is more about the ability to adapt and evolve whereas the deep as we kind of get you know we'll get we'll get better more details in this but the deeps claim is to kind of stop to just overpower it and to to remain static um in a way and it it's not that simple because sword logic is much more convoluted than that and then we have the worm pact on top of sword logic which confuses it even further but it's it's a it's the it's the atom it's the atom argument it's the the atom against the promedial broth you know, that Tolan spoke about. It's the sky and the deep. And one of them's going to win, and it's a matter of which one wins. And that's what I think you know, the Leviathan is very obviously on the side of the sky, um, which we've all attributed to the light. Um, obviously, the, the, war, the Leviathan is somewhat of a prison warden, is what we kind of have taken to calling him. He's, he's a guard against people poking the worms basically um now and i guess we can go to the next card too yeah. but you know it it definitely is a for a uh precursor to what exactly is going to happen to the hive because he says you know you turn back from the world killing way or you will live as death and devastation so that's my that's my yeah. two cents. Yeah, I like that he asked what power calls you down here. It's almost like he's insinuating that they're being influenced, um, as as if the the familiar has has influenced them to to make this decision as opposed to them doing it on their own. Um, but to them, from their perspective, they have no reason to trust the Leviathan any more than they trust the honest worm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, the next card is the bargain. It's a good one. Um, this actually takes place in the deep before, well, I'll just let it unfold. Right. You are Arash, heir to the Osmium throne. You stand naked on the hull of an ancient ship. You stand exposed to the crushing pressure and the ferocious heat of the deeper fundament. It should annihilate you. It is by my will alone that you survive. I am Yule, the honest worm. Behold my passage. 
Behold my vast displacement, my ponderous strength, my great and coiling length, my folded jaws and curled wings. Behold the hiving cities symbiotic with my flesh. I am fecund, Aurash. I am the beginning and end of lives. Behold the ear, Zol, Ur, Akka, the virtuous worms. Look upon us and know that we are good. And then in brackets, take away an O, God. For millions of years, we have, we have been trapped slash growing in the deep. From across the stars, we have called life to fundament so that it might contend against extinction. For millennia, we have awaited you, our beloved hosts. Against you stand the cruel Leviathan and all the forces of the sky. They would crush you down into the dark. They have arranged their moons to drown you in fear of your potential. We want to help you, princes. We offer to each of you a bargain, a symbiosis. Take into your bodies our children, our newborn larvae. From them you shall obtain eternal life. From them you shall gain power over your fragile flesh, the power to make of it as you will. And should you find an imperfection in the world, an injustice or an inconvenience, you will have the power to repair it. Let no mere law bind you. We ask one thing in exchange, O oh princes. You must obey your nature forever. In your immortality, Arash, you may never cease to explore and inquire. For the sake of your children, in your immortality, Jiro, you may never cease to test your strength. In your immortality, Sathona, you may never abandon cunning. If you do, your worm will consume you. And as your power grows, O oh princes, so will your worm's appetite. But we offer eternity, Arash. We offer you a chance at the universe. Would you deny your people infinity? Reach up to me. Let my flesh be your sacrament. This is the bargain that they make with the worms. And it's a hell of a bargain at that. Yeah, but in the face of what they're facing, I... We, we can all stand here after having read all. How many of these cards are there? We're on nine right now. No, how many are there actually? 52. The, um, after, after having read 52 of these cards, we can stand. And after having battled Thrall for countless hours, we can stand and stand in judgment. But facing what they're facing in this moment, it's a tough decision. Right. And, that, and that's, you know, we keep this argument is never going to end, but we keep going over in the argument, but I, I think that that's, that's a very important point is in the context of their existence at this time, you know, given what they know, given what they're facing, given what they just went through or well have gone through. I, I can sympathize with what they're doing. Like I can, I mean, they, they, I completely said it now. I, I don't know if I could necessarily empathize with what they're doing, but I mean, I, I could see an argument for it one way or the other. I really could. I mean, I, I definitely understand where they're coming from. And again, like I said, you know, when we were saying earlier, it's, this is their chance to be like, you know what? Screw you. I'm not going to follow, you know, you guys keep telling us that this is the timid truth. You know, this is what we're destined to do. Well, no, we're not. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, rise up against this and push, push it back. We're gonna take basically our destiny in our own hands and make of it what we will. And that is a very human, human trait. You know, that's that's very, that's what all of us do in some degree every day. Is you take it's it what you would do if you were in that situation, right? It's and that's yeah. You know, let's face it. That is you know? exactly what a lot of people would do. And I mean, you can you can say that you wouldn't, but if you're put in that situation, I, I don't see a lot of people turning that down. And I mean, yeah, you know, like again, like Justin said, you know, after after you get to the end of the story and, you know, where we sit in game and in, you know, our character's existence, you, you definitely can make the judgment, but hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, there's, there's decisions right. that the tower's made, Sunbreakers, that they probably regret 
And it's just, you know, Osiris. There's there's decisions that are terrible decisions that, in hindsight, oh, well, that was pretty We really re- need to redo that card. What, Osiris? Like Osir- yeah, we yeah, need to do Osiris himself gotta, again because... Totally redo it. We'll probably pull another two week. I two I've put my uh, spin foil on for it. Well, especially with everything that's developed since we've done that too. Yeah, dude. Okay. Um, so yeah, Yule. What do we got? Yule, Ear, Zul, Ur, and Akka. Um, Yule has obviously titled himself the Honest Worm. Um, we don't. We, Makes you assume that the other worms have titles. We don't really know them at this point. But, yep. So that's the bargain that starts this ball rolling. And what we want to point out it's, also, I think we should, mm-hmm. is the fact that these worms, even though the wor- word worm is yes. spelled like an earthworm, so to speak, the Still way they describe worm. themselves is very dragon like. Like a worm, you know. W Y R M. Exactly, you know. Behold my passage. Behold my vast placement. I am ponder my ponderous strength, my great and coiling length, my folded jaws and curled wings. You know, and it also says that it has hiving cities symbiotic with its flesh. Yep, and it's like this me. is definitely not the same dead white worm. That Sathona, Orash, all of their dad held in a glass case intended for. This is something entirely yeah. different. You know, and this is I, his. I true also form. want to point out I don't think, I still don't buy the whole thing of that they are the host that they've been waiting for. I think that they've just been waiting for someone to get past the Leviathan and they would have taken anybody. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I I think that you know my my theory is they sent out these little white worms or whatever they sent them out as larva, which they obviously are larva, but they sent out hundreds of them, and it's just a matter of who picked it up and who got to it first. Well, it's just a matter of making them feel special. You are right. the chosen right. ones, right? Um, no, no, no. I, yeah, I just I know that that's been an and the Osmium so. Court just so happened to have the perfect candidates for it. You right. know. Um. Also, the the worms actually sound um, more serpent like, so that would that would be more in line with say a Chinese dragon right. than say a uh, like a Scandinavian dragon or or weapon. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really and what I see also, is, is more tail than than body. Right. But it's it's interesting. See, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm <laughs> trying so hard not to, <laughs> to start down this road. I love it. <laughs> there's so many theories I have about I am worms. home uh, I mean there's just so much about it. that's why I love the books of sorrow dude because there's just there's so much you can or can't take from it whatever you choose to do and it seems very, like everybody yeah. takes something different from it oh yeah you no, know that's and you know, yeah exactly. and I will I will actually I'll give out my Twitter handle la- later. I will actually post <laughs> my Chinese dragon theory. And Selfish. You can, uh, you can catch it. You can catch it at a uh, hashtag Chinese dragon theory. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that there. <laughs> Bye. I think people. he's talking to you. Oh, yeah. God. Hashtag <laughs> Bye. Oh, um, God. No. Uh, actually, um, we're, approaching, we're approaching the two-hour mark, and yeah, let's we've got. Ten win. cards. Holy shit. Yeah, oh, crap. Start. Yeah, no, you are right the first time. I'm sorry, guys. I'm terribly we can, sorry. Uh, we can start paraphrasing these, kind of synopsizing them, and uh, and hit the high points. Or we can, uh, if we do this in three segments, <laughs> we, we'll, we'll have to paraphrase some of them. Because so, we've been doing that so far. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lord. so let's... Uh, Let's kind of move on. Okay. So the and, next uh, one is verse two. Number 10, Immortals. Yes. Verse Anybody two. else have it up yet? Yep, I got it. Yes. Go ahead. Go for it, Blue. Immortals. We are the worm, your god, the flesh of hope. Our compact is done. You are our rash eternal. 
and we are bound to you as close as your appetites, as your loves or needs, as the weapon in your fists and the word in your throat. We've had enough of this dismal place, haven't you? We're intellectualating your ship with larva. Go back to your species. Spread the good news in the osmium court and the hydrogen fountain, in the bone plaza and the star surgery. You will rise up into the world. If anyone rejects symbiosis with our children, make an example of them. A mighty wave is coming for them all. They'll die anyway. Save only what can be saved. The worm grants you, pow you power over your own flesh, Arash. When you've taken the king morph, what will your adult name be? Oryx? It means long thought. We approve. So... Evangelization is the first thing that hits me in the face when I read that. Um, it's a holy war. Like, you know, that's that's what it is. It's you convert or die. You either are with us or you're against us, and if you're against us, you're dead. And the, the justification to this is very, very bleak. It's, they're going to die anyways, so give them a chance, and, you know, if they don't, if they don't fall in line, cut them down. Make an example of them and spread it through fear. I'm not going to try so hard not to go into a political conver conversion <laughs> of this because I will get in trouble. But That's right. Go read history, and this is not something that hasn't happened here on Earth. <laughs> this, is, this is... There's been big wars about this in the medieval times. I'm just yeah, going to say that. Yeah, this is the first of the many drinking the Kool-Aid cards. Yeah. Um, thoughts, Willie? Are you good with that one? There's, I mean, that one's pretty cut and dry. It is, really. I mean... The next ones are pretty cut and dry, actually. It's pretty much a history of what how they get off fundament. I think we can knock those out pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless you had something on that one, Willie, I, I'm going to move on to the Conquerors. Um, Sabathun, Mother Morph of Sathona, we delight in your sharp mind. For millions of years, the Leviathan caged us here. It is a pawn of the sky, a philosophy of cosmic slavery. The sky seeds civilizations predicated on a terrible lie, that right actions can prevent suffering, that pockets of artificial rules can defy the final beautiful logic. This is like trying to burn water, antithetical to the nature of reality, where deprivation and competition are universal. In the deep, we enslave nothing. Liberation is our passion. We exist to help the universe achieve its terminal, self-forging glory. The war rages on. Soon it will consume fundament. We are pleased with your use of the larva to create mighty knights and plentiful warriors. Tao's retreat to the hydrogen fountain proves your superior strength. But you must know that reclaiming your home is not enough. There are 511 species living on fundament. One of them must have the technology you need to leave this world. This is uh, the Krill Strike Back. And uh, I, I really, it, when I speak about the hive and, and the, the sword logic and things like this, I always like to think of, you know, like nature's law as opposed to man's law. Um, survival instincts actually run counter to a lot of our ideals and, and practices, things like honor and, and love and um, loyalty, and a lot of times run counter to survival instinct. I think that's what they talk about when they're talking about uh, artificial rules. Uh, yes. Again, not to get too again, philosophical. I, I, I'm not going to start because <laughs> if I get started, yeah. it's got to... Oh, come on. Be fun, Blue. Um, I think... Well, okay. Uh... Go for what it, Blue. You, what, are you going to get fired? Yeah, that's so true. No, I'm just going to get flamed for this whole thing. <laughs> it's so... It just screams... It just screams Holy War. And it screams Crusade. Like, if, I mean, his, so, okay, I'm gonna, just, I'm just gonna say it. 
it, it was it was a no, especially conquerors and this lot the last card before this. It was a known practice of most of the Middle Eastern cultures during the Crusades that that's exactly what they would do. They would raise and salt salt the ground upon which their enemies you know held temples and they would build temples above the fallen temples of their enemies. That was that was a known practice historically. Just look it up. Look at Spain's history alone, and that's what they did. And that's exactly, you know, reading that card, reading this card, that's exactly what it screams to me, is that is, the, that's, that's the evangelization of a militaristic religion, is what it is. You get in line or you get cut down. I'm just exactly. going to, I'm no, trying, no, yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't, and I mean, hist- just, yeah, go, go read the history of Spain during the Crusades. It is one of the bloodiest things that you will ever read, and it's extremely bleak and that is exactly what i see in my mind when i read the last card in this card is there is a reason spain has conquistadors there, there was a reason that an entire part of their culture was dedicated 150 percent to the, the art of war and that was you know it, it led to a lot of other things but that that i mean that was crucial to the development of that culture and that's exactly what I hear when this is happening, is the rolling tide of a culture of violent zealousness. I'm trying so hard to toe a line. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a culture of violence that is spread through the overzealous understanding that what they do is the right way. And, you know, the, the, make an example of them. That's, you know, Romans did it. Um, the Middle Eastern cultures did it, you know, European cultures did it. Every culture in the history of humanity has done that. And it's just, you know, that's the dark side of, that's the dark side of conquest and conquerors. You know, that, that is what it is. And this is, this is literally, this is a world war that they are doing. So, I mean, again, that's, that's another example of a really bad situation is World War One and World War Two. It, and that's exactly what the Conqueror says, is this war rages on. Soon it will consume Fundament. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome, Blue. I think I, think I, I didn't man it. I don't think I no, stepped over the line on that one. But, yeah, that, I mean, that's exactly, as soon as I started talking, I was like, oh, I need to shut up because I'm going to get myself in trouble on that one. Our, our so, listener in Spain might be kind of yeah, angry with you, well, but, but I don't, otherwise I think we'll I don't, I don't think they will because, I mean, if you... <laughs> The, the Crusades during the Spanish geographical area during the Crusades was, I mean, for God's sake, Granada was a, I think it was, yeah, I think it was Granada. It was just a, a it, it was a ping pong match. It was like Luxembourg during the World War. It was a ping pong match on who owned it, you know, and I might be misremembering that, that location. I could be, I'm not no, extremely no. well versed on my history right now, but that's exactly what it reminded me of. It's like, well, we beat you, so we're going to build our temple over your temple, and then we beat you again, so we're going to tear your temple down and build our temple over. The- and it was just a, it was a bloodbath. So yeah, and then the hive say, we beat you, so we're going to build a temple out of your, your out of your bodies. Yeah, and it's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, then you, then you have the bone chapel because you know that was a fun fact in Rome. But you know, it's 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 not something. That, and the fun thing is, or the, not the fun thing, but the interesting thing to me is that <laughs> everyone had such a visceral reaction to these cards, but I don't know if they realize the historical context in which this is actually kind of stuff that happened to us as humanity in real life. Like, this this is real life. You know, this is... I could see someone in that time saying these exact... Well, not these exact things, because then we get into paracausal stuff, but... Similar if we concepts. keep doing this like this, we're going to end up taking like two months I know, to do these I know, books. and this is why I wasn't going to let myself, but you guys made uh, me talk. I just wanted him to do one like <laughs> okay, that, okay. Willie. Let's, let's we, move we've on got 14 minutes. Deep. Out of the deep, go. You want me to do it? Do do Out it? of the yeah. deep, is that where we're at? I, I thought we were already supposed to be on 52 and 1. Oh, we're into the sky, I mean. Oh. So see, there we go. Uh, chapter set, 7 or 12, I mean. 12, Out yeah. of the yes. deep. Zivu Arath, Night Morph of Zyro. You love to conquer, don't you? We love to see you work. 
nearly 2% of fundament's surface is now our dominion. Your species embraces the worm. The zigzaggy is past. The g- <laughs> Shut up. The god wave will reach you in less than two years. Our organs inform us that Teo and her surviving refusal list flee toward Kaharn Atoll. She hopes to rally the species of the Fundament against you. The Leviathan's agents work tirelessly to, to destroy ships and engines, trapping us on the Fundament. If we cannot make ships, we will become them. Overwhelm the Kaharn b- Bastion. Slaughter everyone there. From your axe, we shall obtain the logic we require to cut space open and migrate to orbit. Reality is a fine flesh, O General Ours. Let us feast it. Once again, another uh, hoo, hoo, hoo. nod to the Ahamkara. Yes, yeah, major. The, the, that the way the worms and the Ahamkara speak is just way too yeah too actually, similar, you know. And it, also point out the needle is not able to escape orbit. Just a point. There was a there was a conversation a little bit about that too. Yeah, and actually, if you want to see something... That is actually a good point, you know. Um, Check out the skull of Dyer Ahamkara. It has almost an identical um, flavor text to that last line. The reality. Uh Uh-huh. Moving along, moving along. Good stuff. Into the sky? Yes. Okay. Into the sky. I'll take that one. Who's doing... Yeah, go for it. You've done well, Oryx. Can you feel the growth of your worm? Can you feel your will beginning to warp mere law? At times we detect sadness in you. Understand, long thinker, that you enact a sacred and majestic task. Existence is the struggle to exist. Only by playing that game to its final, unconditional victory can we complete the universe. Your war is divine work. We are free from Fundament's core, and Savathun's cutters are ready to fly. With Zivu Arath victorious, we have opened a wound at Kaharn, a wound leading to a geostationary orbit. Behold, we are faithful to our covenant. We have no future on Fundament, but her moons will make fine habitats. Let us rise. And there's, and I will make the point, there's the concept of the worms leaving Fundament, which I think we had a yes. giant argument about that too. So yes. there's that one. I was here for that one. Um, also, yeah, that shows that they do not want to be at the fundament anymore. Uh, period. I don't blame them, but it also hints at the the presence of sword logic, obviously, because the previous card mentions the logic that they gain, and then obvious, and right here, uh, da, 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 existence is the struggle to exist. And where did it go? God, when I just I just missed it. Anyways, the existence is the struggle to exist is the reference. It's my personally, I think of a reference back to the Adam conversation that Toland had about the, the basis of sword logic. Um, also, I noted that this is the, the massacre at Kaharn. So they're already kind of making a name for themselves as doing this thing. Yeah. That's, uh, well, it says right there that they, uh, you know, they have a majority of their species that have accepted the worm. Correct. So they already have their own army. Their well, they have army, their own ships, of too. Of course. Yeah, their own ships. It's like you pointed out, Blue, the needle ship that is kind of like their very pointy version of a submarine. Right. It... I'm kind of curious though. Like, okay, so just just real quick, when it says that they've opened a wound leading to geostationary orbit, okay, to me, what that makes me think of is a literal cut in the space time, like fabric. That's like a, a warp hole. Like, it's not like we're escaping orbit. It's literally we cut a. You mean hole like the hive this... always cut? Yeah. Picture a tomb ship entering. Actually, I don't, know yeah, you know. If, I don't know if you've ever read The Golden Compass, but there's a book in that series called The Subtle Knife, and that's what I keep picturing, is a literal tear in the sky that they just go through. You read too many books. I that I will not argue with that. But He's definitely got some book learning. 
I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying. He's like, hey, have you read this book? And I'm like, I don't even know uh, what that book is. No, I've never even heard of that book, <laughs> even though it's by one of my favorite authors. I'm I'm still working on this novel um, that we're on right now. Uh, well, we'll get to so it. So from Blue, we get to Justin, right? Yes. Yeah. Born and Spray. Yeah, um, uh, one, uh, let's see, 52 and 1. Uh, good news. The 52 moons of Fundament host a star-faring civilization far more sophisticated than anything you've encountered so far. Tao's ship fled towards the large ice moon, where a species of bony, six-armed cephalopods keeps their icy, icy capital. Savathums named them the Ammonite. They seem eager to grant Tao asylum. Idiots. We tried appealing to their hopes and dreams. This was largely unsuccessful because they were already happy and indoctrinated. This angered us, so we've, desi we've devised a plan. Our organs detect the 53rd moon in, or in the orbit of Fundament. A traveler, divine presence of the sky. Now we know what arranged the Zizigi. You'll have to kill them all and take their stuff. Once the Ammonite are out of the way, we can deal with the traveler. Do not hesitate. You're fighting the hypocritical puppets of a cosmic parasite. Avenge your ancestors. So they're fighting the speaker. <laughs> Different day, different. Well, this is the this is the introduction of the traveler, right? Who is you know not only there right now for us as guardians, but has been there since Halo. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> uh, that and nice it also, Easter it egg also there. does note here that the traveler is not the sky. Yeah, it's there are the two divine, different entities. It's the divine presence now, of the sky. Exactly, and it spreads the light around, kind of like the uh, storm joys did right. back when the krill were the krill, before they were the hive that they are now. And <laughs> we'll go ahead and we'll dig into Born as Prey, unless you got something else to say on the uh, last card. Yeah, I just had a little tidbit. Um, uh, Ammonite's an actual thing. It's a real thing. It's a pre-Cretaceous -cre pre mollusk. Um, fossil. Kind of resembles an a awesome, not awesome Pokemon. Yeah. It actually, uh, I'm going to leave you at that. But it actually. <laughs> yeah, you really, it, you, you said it was an awesome Pokemon. I can't. <laughs> it resembles. Let's, let's it resembles wrap our minds Nautilus. around that real quick. Yeah, but, uh, anyways, moving Damn it, moving Blue. Along. <laughs> You're my boy, but, uh, <laughs> you're lucky. Let's, let's move yeah, on. you're my boy, but what the hell, man? <laughs> what the hell, Blue? <laughs> okay, you gonna do so, Born as Prey, Will Born as Prey. Alright, Born as Prey. This is unacceptable. Are you so weak, Born as Prey, and doomed to die by a predator? Works' failure to, of resolve has led us to catastrophe. The Ammonite fleets under Chroma Admiral Refreet have pressed us back to the sixth moon. Once more, we find ourselves burrowing into the world's core to survive. Savathun, you must draw Oryx out of his cantonia. Make him understand that the ideals of peace and stability he clings to are cancers. Brutal, unjust obstacles between us and a fair cosmos. These are the bait stars that the sky uses to bind us as slaves. War is the natural rectification of inequality. The universe's way of pursuing equilibrium. Zivu Arath, you cannot defeat the Ammonites in Teo in the line of combat. We propose new tactics. Breed your armies back to strength. And find a way to disperse the broods across these many moons. If we cannot defeat their strengths, we will infect their weaknesses. Which shows the worms feel like the sisters cannot win. As they are now, they have to devise a different war plan in order to keep everything going the way they intend it to. Right, and it's also the first time that we've seen Oryx step back from the conquest. Right, he has idea, or well, yeah, he has ideals of peace and stability, 
And it's almost like, you know, he, he seems to kind of have been like, yeah, hey, we got off the planet. Okay, well, we've accomplished what we came for. Do we really need to keep going? You know, it's, that's kind of how I read that. And then the worms are like, nope, yep, we'll keep going or we'll eat you. Nom, nom, nom. Keep moving. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, orcs is starting to feel like, Okay, we're no longer the weakest species that anyone's ever heard of. The timid truth is a lie. And the worms are like, well, you're not done yet. Let us keep killing things and you will get stronger, which Orcs doesn't seem to agree or disagree with as of yet. But we also only have three minutes left, gentlemen. Okay, so... It might be a great place to to stop and pick up. What car did we get to? Sword Logic. Oh yeah, this is a oh great place God, to sword stop. Sword Logic. <laughs> what do you think, Luke? I think fifteen is a good chunk of it. Um, I think that that is a. It's further than I thought we were gonna get. I'll be honest. I thought we were gonna get stuck at like five or six. Well, there you go. There you so, go. I said, I said, really, I set the bar low for myself. <laughs> about low expectations. I have low expectations for myself. But yeah, no, I think you know cards, one through fifteen. I'll I'll take it. Pretty yeah. well covered too. Yeah, I I think that we did a pretty. pretty we threw some uh, we threw some theories in there, but stuck to reading the cards. And, uh, yeah, 15 isn't bad. It's not a bad number, considering all the information that's in the Books of Sorrow. You know, yes. this... Once again, it's a chronicle of how the Hive became the Hive. How Orcs became the Taken King. What do we have that hold, you know, we could see in the future? This... The whole thing about the Books of Sorrow is it gives so much information, probably as much if not more information that all of the grimoire in year one does. Granted, a majority of it is about the Hive and Orcs, but still, it gives you that deep, personal understanding that you wouldn't get if you don't read the grimoire, which uh, I'm kind of disappointed we only got to 15 because... Oh, come on. We can do it. We can... All right, right. No, I can't. I can't do it <laughs> I was about to say, you're probably about to pop pass out. I actually, I actually want to do a... Uh, a uh, we might do a Adam small... West. Yeah, we yeah, might we, do an Adam We West haven't even done shout-outs yet cliffhanger type thing. Can oh, I do that really Lord. quick, Willie? Yeah. It's, it, Go for it's it, kind of prime up for the next one. Okay. Will Oryx and Co. defeat the entire universe? Will we find out what the mother jelly tastes like? And will <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Willie Beeman ever pronounce syzygy? Find out next time on Focus Fire Chat. <laughs> Jesus. We're going to make him do that every time that now. That just happened. Yeah, we're making him do that every time now. <laughs> yeah, Justin, now you're obligated to do that. Oh, my God. Jeez. Okay, Tell so let's stream. let's roll through the shout-outs. Uh, let's, do, let's do shout-outs, and then let's see if we can get... Let's put Willie to bed. Yeah, put Willie to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Willie has to go to bed. <laughs> okay. Go All ahead, right. Blue. All right, so just real quick, shout out again. Um, if you guys have not already listened to uh, Destiny Ghost Stories, give them a listen. They are amazing. Um, they do a really good job. They are right now walking through the uh, classes of Guardians at the moment. So, and I think last one was Hunters, and then before that was Titans, and Belle was actually on the Hunters, so she did an amazing job. Yeah, there was, was awesome. lots, lots of giggles. Um, but they did awesome. And then also, as always, shout out to the Dames. Um, great, great group of wonderful ladies. Some of them are more insane than the others, but we still love them. <laughs> glitch, glitch, I'm looking at I've you. I've gotten to meet a couple one. of them. Yep, that's one um, of them. 
safe gamers as well. Uh, Crispy is an awesome person, and if you guys have not checked out the safe gamers, and if you have anybody who isn't a dad or isn't a dame and is maybe a younger player, the safe gamers are definitely the place that I would recommend them going to. They are an amazing group of people, and I can't speak more highly of two groups of people other than the DoD, which we'll get to in a minute, but the dames and the safe gamers are amazing, amazing groups. So, Justin, you're up. Yeah, yeah. First of all, shout out to all DoD. Um, Without him, I probably probably would be sitting here talking to Willie and Blue and you all about the Grimoire. I would probably put Destiny down a long time ago. And, uh, as well, I'd really like to give, I, I meant to do this last week, but I'd really like to give a, a huge shout out to our lore band, which is the the group that spawned, pun intended, this, uh, this podcast, whatever you want to call it. Um, you're amazing. Even the weeks when I can't get in there as much as I'd like to, I can always come back to an amazing conversation um, over anything I could ever want to see. Um, you guys are awesome. And lastly, uh, everyone who made it out to the live chat tonight, um, I, I haven't been able to have that window open much, but I saw Josh, Operation Man Bag, uh, Rev was in the house. Pins. And if I'm, yeah, Pins as well. If I'm missing names, uh, help me out, Blue and Willie. Uh, you guys that make it out here That's live so that right we're now. not just, yeah, so that we're not uh, talking to the void. I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming out, um, and uh, everybody have a happy Thanksgiving, um, and uh, I'll leave the rest to Willie. All right, I'll go ahead and throw my shout out uh, of course, Foxtrot, Dad's a Destiny Foxtrot, that's the DoD clan that I run, love it, guys there like none other. Shout out to Blue for dragging me into here every week. No, I'm not about to fall asleep, so <laughs> don't type that to people. That's right, you didn't think I had my own chat, but I do. You some of a beach. <laughs> That's right, Justin. Touche, you fuck. Willie? We, we got through the first 15 cards, and yes. I'd say we are bent, not broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm about broken. But uh, shout out to Damo. I don't think if we had Damo in the chat, we would have it as entertaining as it is being in the chat, honestly. So oh, no. big shout out to him, even though he aggravates the hell out of me sometimes. And if I knew he was somewhere in my area... I would choke the hell out of him <laughs> until he no longer drew breath, probably sometimes. But let's be clear. If he had been here, we would have gotten through two cards. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe two cards if Damo was in here. That that was probably why I was thinking a low number. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Um, and big shout out to Ishtar Collective, of course. That's Ishtar-Collective.net. Um, so much information. That's where we draw cards from top to bottom. They do such a good job of organizing everything, and hopefully we'll have something special for you guys soon, not including Blue's... Random giveaways? Yeah, this very random giveaway. I'm trying to tell people that we're about to do the giveaway. Hashtag loot crate. Oh man, loot crate just yeah. like I, that story behind that. I'm just I'm I've, I've given people a little bit of time to get back into the chat because I already <laughs> told like, you uh, you can give yeah, it to me. I, I swear that I, that's what it's starting to look like. But no, it was like it was one of those things where I got an email and they're like, "Hey, here's a here's a free loot crate," and I was like, "Oh, okay, oh, okay. I don't know what I'm gonna <laughs> like. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it." So. I guess I'll just do this. There, there. Eh, giving it away is a good thing to do, man. All so, right. Let's see. Looks like six we got people it in chat. You know, I'm not gonna get it. So, who's gonna get it? Somebody get it. 
Are we ready? No, no whammies. No one, no one? Oh my gosh. I swear. If, watch Nightbot get it. Oh, he deserves it though. He's here every night. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Alright, you guys ready? Come on, Nightbot. I'm rooting for you. Give it, Josh. And. Josh! Josh! There you go. Alright. Good job. And, and you know what? Josh is here, I believe, every... I think he he's is. Been he has every been, single last he has been every yeah, stream. Yeah, Josh. Every stream that I do, he, he is pestering. Yeah, me so, Mr. Santiago, keeping, keeping up, you yeah. deserve that damn loot crate. You enjoy it. Definitely and, enjoy the fact that I wish I had it instead. Well, and it's... It, I, again, the theme this month is... Josh, go ahead... I need a punch card. Go ahead and email me... Um, <laughs> Your first and uh, I need the first and last name and then an email address. Uh, Loot Crate requires me to put that in, and I just put my email into the chat. So just email that to that uh, email, and I'll get I'll get it turned in as soon as I get off stream here. Uh, there is a time sensitivity on it. It is only good until tomorrow at 9 p.m. Pacific. I, hang on, real quick. Let me confirm that real fast. Just. Email blue now, so yeah, that we well, email email out. me now. But I mean, what I what I mean, and is then mail me everything that you get, you so I can enjoy that awesome loot crate. It is nine p.m. Pacific time. Um, but yeah, no. And what I was what I was saying at the beginning, it's actually a combat theme, which I thought was like really funny in light of the sword logic conversations we've been having and all that. I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's actually fitting. So. Yep, just email email me first and last name and then an email address. So, and then I think basically the mechanics of it is it signs you up for a free month and then you just have to remember to go back in next month and unsubscribe, I think is what how it works. But, yep. So, I think that's that's all we got. Congratulations, Josh and like I said, next week we are going to be off for Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody! Uh, thank you know, obviously, thank you so much for putting up with us. And then after that, we're going to try. We're going to try to do a double the week after. I think is what our current thought is. We're going to be ironing that out, and we'll be pushing that out. I I'll still be online in chat, and I think we will all be online in chat, but we just won't be able to stream. So. Yeah. I'm gonna see if Willie and I can put out something particularly spin foily um, for oh, the true. week. With we Blue don't not stream. monitoring us, we can. Oh man, we're running true. about yeah. ten minutes after. So, yeah, but gentlemen, but All it right. wouldn't be a stream; just be something on Podbean. So, anyways, right. uh, let's go before Willie turns into a pumpkin. All right, you guys That's have a good right. night, and we will see you in chat.